Hello and welcome to this month's Heart of the Matter brought to you by Mayo Clinic and the Sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndromes Foundation, the SADS Foundation. I'm Dr. Michael Ackerman and I'm the director of Mayo Clinic's Long QT Syndrome Clinic and the Winland Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory and the president of the SADS Foundation. This month's Heart of the Matter question indicating that I have Long QT Syndrome and asthma. I need a rescue inhaler. Is there a safe one? to use. Thank you for that question. This is a very important question because asthma is a common condition. So it's not surprising that there are going to be patients with long QT syndrome who also have asthma. To decide how best to treat this, several things need to be considered. How bad is the long QT syndrome? What's that person's risk of a long QT syndrome triggered event? What's the concern with the rescue inhalers? Well, the rescue inhalers, like the albuterol puff inhaler that I have to use from time to time, is an adrenaline-like agent. So the concern is inhaling that adrenaline-like agent called albuterol or a variety of other asthma inhalers could irritate the long QT syndrome. That's the theory. Has it ever happened? Yes. There are very rare case reports and observations of that. However, it is extremely rare. I have actually never had a long QT syndrome patient of mine who also has asthma have a long QT triggered event because of their asthma inhaler therapy. That's over 800 long QT patients in total in 12 years. What should any of us do who have long QT syndrome and asthma? Our asthma doctors need to make sure that they're satisfied with your asthma care. How significant is your asthma symptoms? Do you need to be on maintenance asthma therapy that doesn't involve agents that are adrenaline-like, meaning albuterol inhaler, to make it very unlikely or as unlikely as possible that you'll ever have an asthma attack or an asthma breakthrough which will need that asthma inhaler. But importantly, if you do, if you are having an asthma attack, your asthma must be treated. And it should then be treated with the albuterol inhaler or an agent like it. And you can talk with your asthma specialist if they have an inhaler that they prefer better or they think has less adrenaline-like properties. From my standpoint, the key is in the setting of an asthma attack, whether you have long QT or you don't have long QT, that you treat your asthma. And do not fear that the treatment of your asthma could cause your fatal long QT event to occur. That's extremely uncommon. But if that were, that uncommon possibility were to become that asthmatic's reality, this is another reason why we in our program advise all long QT families to have and acquire their own automatic external defibrillator, their AED. That's part of the family safety gear for the worst case scenarios. So what if in the treatment of that asthma attack, the use of that asthma inhaler was a bad idea on that particular day? The perfect storm has descended upon that long QT patient. Well then, in that setting, we do have that AED. And in our program, that AED has been purely Boy Scout Be Prepared for both long QT patients with asthma and long QT patients who don't have asthma, as we have not needed to use their AED. So thank you very much, and do make sure that if there's long QT patients out there who are having a serious asthma attack, please make sure to have your asthma treated. That's this month's Heart of the Matter question, and I look forward to being back with you again next month. Have a great day.